20th century dog has never had it so good. For example, these lucky animals, doted on by their owners and fussed over by highly skilled, highly dedicated groomers. This is no poodle parlour for precious film stars, as we'll see later. It's an example of an ordinary high street business that's on the up. And it's not the only service for pets that used to be just a service for people. Straighten this back. Bring the other one up a little bit. Anthony Pusey is a registered osteopath who runs a practice in Sussex. Now, that is the tender area. Yes. His uh, patient, Ann uh, Jenner, has suffered with a bad back since she was 16 and finds that this treatment relieves the pain where conventional medicine has failed. Touch on your left side and on the right. Yes. So when her best friend developed a similar complaint, she naturally recommended him to Mr Pusey too. Her best friend is a basset hound, just one of his many animal patients. Dogs, cats and even horses benefit from his specialist attention. It's definitely less movement on that yes. shoulder than there was. Yeah, that's right. There, there's still a discrepancy on both sides. I was brought up to believe that all, all our problems as humans was because we were on two feet and we'd, we'd risen up from being uh, on all fours. And it would appear that the, the animals on all fours get just as much trouble with their backs as we do. If you see x-rays of the skeleton of, of a dog, uh, they're very, very similar indeed, the structure. Uh, and the, of particularly of the joints, uh, almost identical to that of a human being. So it was not difficult to modify the techniques of osteopathy uh, to the treatment of animals. Anne Jenner, her husband Louis, and all their basset hounds have been suitable cases for treatment at one time or another. Well, the very first one was Butty, who was very severely paralysed in his hind legs and back. And we helped him into the consulting room. He had to have his hind legs supported in a sling. Mr Pusey treated him on the floor at that time. And he felt his back and found where the trouble was and was able to treat it then and there with an absolutely instant improvement. But He's had seven years of fairly comfortable, happy life, which I think he wouldn't have had. Now, while we can consult an osteopath without referring to our doctor, by law, animals can only be treated at the request of their veterinary surgeon, who has to supervise the treatment. So twice a week, Anthony Pusey works at a surgery in Haywood Heath, alongside Sussex vet Graham de Bidermaker. He can somehow manage to uh, find out in what way the animal is tense and where the muscle tensions are and so on and how the animal wants to be held and positioned and manipulated to allow relaxation and really it's that uh, technique of, of palpation and then manipulation that uh, veterinary surgeons just aren't taught and so that's that's what he can do that that we can't and so he really um, is an addition to our treatment it doesn't really replace what we do but he, he's a specialist that just takes things a stage further shoulders feel very tight mm -hmm. I come up under there there's a lot of hardness that usually suggests that the neck is getting a little bit stiff and uncomfortable and the nerves that come from the neck are getting, getting pinched yes. and making the shoulder muscles go unnecessarily tight. And if I press in firmly on the neck, it is really quite hard. Mm. And if I just try to stretch him, he doesn't really like it desperately. Coming down to the middle back, feeling for areas where the muscles are unnecessarily tight there's a little, little spot there, but the stiffness is here. And then come down to the end of the spine. And now I'll check the movement of the hips and the pelvic bones. And just take his legs off the ground. And you can see that he's not dropping and letting the hips go right back into full extension. So that's partly muscle tension, partly his own anxiety. So this, I'll start off just by stretching him generally from about here downwards and get a little bit of traction in which means i'll have to hold him by his front legs and then just take him like that and then 
has let him hang. They move around like anything, these dogs. Hello. That's it. And then we play with each other. They have all enjoyed it, I think. I think um, they've loved it. The expression yeah. on their faces when you see Mr. Pusey treating them is... Relief. Well, no doubt, and, relief. Yeah. and they trust him instantly. Yes, they do. Yes. Absolutely at once. Yes. Um, the, this little one was letting him pull her about by the head in a way that you wouldn't believe an animal would put up with. And the expression on her face was bliss. Human beings can, can, can react by saying, ouch, that doesn't, that hurts. Um, dogs can do it in a much more positive way by biting your finger off. Uh, so, yes, we felt to begin with that it was safer for, for me uh, for the dogs to be anaesthetized. After a little while, we began to find that the dogs seemed, in fact, to respond and relax. And then later on, after a few more months, we found that we, in fact, did not need any kind of sedative at all. That the animals seemed to accept the form of treatment in a very positive way. How's Fred been? Nice He's time. doing very well indeed. Is he? Good. Yes, That's great. Yes. Beginning to walk. Is he? Yeah. That's smashing. That's right. Fred the Dachshund well, damaged a disc in his back by jumping off the bed. After two treatments, he's already showing a marked improvement. Let's have a look and see. It's like a miracle to me. <laughs> We're taught how to feel what is normal Moving tissue around. and where, the, where there's a problem. And by calibrating one's fingers, and if you're running your hands down along the side of, of, a, of a dog or of a horse, you can feel where some area of tissue isn't normal and if it's very boggy and very swollen and the muscles start to react just go into a spasm when you start pushing your hand on it you know that that's going to hurt the animal so you get a a reaction from the body the animal's tissues usually before they feel the pain and if the essence of osteopathy is to produce the maximal beneficial effect with the minimum of trauma. That's always an indication that things have to be The diagnosis starts when the, when the dog is brought into the room. If you look at the way in which they come in, does he walk with a happy gait or is his tail down on the ground? And what their owner looks like, does the owner look miserable and sad or does the owner look very happy? Does the dog look miserable and depressed and fed up with everything and not interested in the world, but totally introspective? Going. Here we are. Let it deliver. Thank you. The eyes in particular are incredibly helpful in diagnosis. Just to look into the eyes of a dog or a human is just the same. You get a very good mirror there of their soul, of how they really are. Although it may be easier to communicate with his human clients, Anthony Pusey has found that, on the whole, animals tend to make better patients. The thing with animals in general is that they do what they want to do. They don't have to go to work. They don't have to look after the children. They don't have to make meals. They don't have to wine, dine and entertain. So that once you've treated them, they say, thank you very much and they toddle off, and they do exactly what their body tells them to do. Now, we advise our human patients to do that, but we know jolly well that it's impractical. So, in fact, animals make very much better patients, in as much as they do what their body tells them to do, not what they feel they ought to do, which helps us enormously, because we really are just giving nature a little push. <laughs> I had been shipwrecked on this island now for three long years. I was becoming weary of the same old food. Then one day I came across a wooden case. Inside I found a curry sauce, a chili sauce, and spicy tomato, all from HP. My food was now much improved. I wish I could say the same for Friday. You still can't get my name right. 
Pass the sauce, Harry. Add variety to life with the new sauces from HP. She was young. She was beautiful. She had everything, including charm, horror. A craving she must control or be weighed down with guilt. Her only option. Low-calorie options with mint, orange, mocha, but mainly chocolate. Just 40 calories a cup. Ovaltine's options. Chocoholic should give them a whirl. You must remember this, a kiss is still a kiss, a sigh is just a sigh, the fundamental things apply as time goes by. So when two lovers woo, they still say, I love you, on that you can rely. Let a pearl pension help look after the fundamental things. As time goes by. Well, baby, I'm thinking about your chocolate. Well, baby, I'm thinking about your taste. Well, baby, I'm thinking about your chocolate. Thinking about your taste. Every day, someone new finds the way to Winnerlock Prime and finds that Winnerlock Prime is full of succulent, meaty pieces. Prime meat. Instinct leads to it. It is, of course, hard to improve on perfection, but for these ladies and gentlemen, Jill East and her canine beauty staff are going to try. They've been collected from their own front doors and very carefully chauffeured across town. And like the Hollywood hero he really ought to have been, little Harry is arriving in some style for his morning of luxury. Already inside, another client, Zaza, is having his nails done. Zaza has a rather artistic temperament. We own a salon, not a saloon, but a salon. Our beauty shop's a busy one, and while we work, do we have fun in our beauty salon? Golly, how we carry on. We cater to the ladies, man, massage their faces and scent their hair. That's why the three of us like it there in our beauty salon. Canine beauty is one of the fastest growing areas of the dog world. And Canine Comforts is not only a salon, but one of the leading schools. From its distinctive aroma of shampoo and wet dog has gone forth an army of trained beauticians to run their own places across the world. It began 20 years ago when Jill East saw the awful results of unskilled hands. A lot of people were asking me to teach them to groom and um, I kept saying no, no, no. And at the time I was working for a veterinary surgeon and with him, you know, we was, during the week, we were stitching dogs' ears back on and stitching mammaries back together, which groomers who had just picked up a book and opened it and thought, here I go, had just set themselves up and done such terrible damage. The qualified groomer is also trained to spot medical worries. There are some pretty gruesome jobs. Right, Natalie, what we're going to do is empty the anal gland. All dogs have anal glands and a lot of them sometimes block up. Now what happens if the dog's anal glands block up, you'll find the, the dog dragging his bottom along the floor, right? And often you'll get a foul smell at the back the of the... The less said about that, the better. Foul. But fleas, skin trouble, ear problems are all simply revealed in the wash. So, of course, is a nice clean dog. Really rub him like an old pair of socks, OK? Just, just like you would your own hair, shampoo. Particularly dirty places on your dog is going to be your feet. You're going to have to really work hard on those, okay? And your elbows here, okay? And your ears. Sam, good boy. That's that. 
It costs between £10 for the basic to £60 for the full works, depending on the size of animal. The salon is normally packed, with some clients queuing patiently, others chatting with their neighbours under the dryer. The most elaborate styling is reserved, without doubt, for one particular breed, for which there are many styles to learn. A lot of people think, you know, it's just a way of puffing up poodles, but it's not really. It was done for a reason, because they used to retrieve birds brought down by the falcons in Louis' time. They used to use them for hunting. And so all the joints were covered by fur to protect them as they went through the bushes and the undergrowth and actually in the water. He has, as you see, he's got bows in his hair. And in the old days, they used to have sort of coloured ribbons, one in the front of their head, and they used to have one on their tail as well. So that as they was going through, if they made wages, they could see whose dog got the bird, so to speak. <laughs> How long does it take to get Hadley into this condition? I would say a good four hours to do him right the way through, with two of you on him as well, to try and get him up, according to the, you know, the thickness of the coat. And that happens how often? Um, he has to be bathed every two and scissored every four, because he is, you know, a white dog, looks very dirty, gets messy. So if you're not a canine beautician expert, Hadley's a very expensive <laughs> a dog very to keep. A very expensive dog, yes. I can see how the poodle design originated, but what can you do for little dogs like Harry, the Shizu, apart from just make him look pretty? Well, um, Harry has a very, very thick coat, and it makes it very difficult for an owner that is working all day to sort of groom him properly. I mean, Har Harry's a wonderful uh, model, really. He's staying very still, but lots of them don't. And so what we've done with Harry, we've cut him down very short, and we've scissored him all over about an inch long. So now he keeps cooler in the summer, he can play, he can do all the things that a normal lively dog can do. And he still looks, you know, sort of like with his breed. He looks the same as his breed. He's not been changed that drastically. For the clients, it's a real dog's delight. Five minutes under the dryer is five minutes in heaven. Some are quite overwhelmed. But then there are Who's others. Friday? Oh, yes, there are others. Right. What breed is it? Doberman. Right. They mark the difficult dogs in the bookings register. The more kisses by the name, the more difficult the dog. When it comes to being difficult, Zaza is going for gold. You learn to adapt and learn to spot the warning, <laughs> the warning signs. There's all kinds of different dogs. They bite for different reasons. You get a dog that's really frightened. He might sort of um, play you up and go to bite you because he's frightened. As soon as you've calmed him down, then you won't have that problem. Uh, now, nobody will love you if you're horrid. Whoa. There's a little dog, a little tough guy that comes in and he's all, you know, and he comes in and you just say to him, hey, you know, come on, what's your game? And you'll find he'll sort of blink at you and think, Oh, crikey, I can get away with this at home, but I can't hear, and you'll handle him. <laughs> I've had my nose removed from the top to the bottom by a Scottish terrier. Um, he decided, I'd finished him, worked all the way through, and um, just saw a little bit of hair sticking out, and thought, perfectionist, just nip that bit off, and he just had hold of me, and he hung on. Scotties lock on to you, and they don't let go, so whatever's under them gives. And unfortunately, it was my nose. But as I worked with the vet at the time, he helped me do a good nose job, you know, sticking it back together again. Wherever you find one expert, you'll find lots of others who think they're more expert. Dog groomers are no exception. This is the annual international groomers contest at Windsor. Groomers have come from across Europe, from Greece, even a party from the United States with its own team manager. There's a lot of tension. I think I probably feel, I try, I try to take the tension. I told them I was going to worry twice, one to get them on the plane, one to get them in the ring, and there only to concentrate on grooming. So uh, there is, a, it's excitement, it's enthusiasm, and it, you know, it's just, you, you've got the adrenaline flowing. Groups one and two, the poodles and the terriers, are already well underway. Two hours to clip a miniature poodle and an hour and three quarters to tidy up a terrier. A panel of international judges is watching every snip. Lynn Draper, Britain's entrant in the terrier class, has a model of patience. Terry De Marino is working on a Bedlington who'd prefer to be in bed. 
Italy is represented by Luciano Travolato. He looks big enough to groom a polar bear, so the little poodle he's been given will do anything to oblige. The Canadian, Diana Sparham, is hoping for top three in the clipped terrier. She's going to be unlucky. Holland wins the terrier, America the miniature poodle. Could I have your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen? Could we have all the competitors at the front of the stage in the Spaniels and Pot Luck class? The closest thing to everyday grooming is the Pot Luck. Again, groomers draw for borrowed dogs, but this time they don't even know which variety. Her name is Gabby. 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 And you can scissor her a shorter flag. It's tense. Your first 10 minutes out there seem to be the most difficult. You ask yourself why you're here, why are you doing this, and you just keep coming back for more. Uh, you kind of begin to block out everything that happens around you if you turn it into a shop type atmosphere. And if you just keep telling yourself it's another day at work. And that seems to make him more comfortable out there. He s'appelle Sam. Je ne le connais pas. And does the dog speak English? Le chien parle anglais? Or... Okay. International. <laughs> Poor dog. Connie, are you happy with the dog you've been given? Very happy, yes. Why? Um, well, I feel I do um, a, a good job on these shawns. I'm real comfortable with um, grooming them, and I enjoy them. <laughs> Do they do this to pets in Japan? Yes, uh, but we don't have a big breed in Japan, only for small ones, because uh, we don't have uh, so much spaces for dogs, I'm afraid. So they only work on small dogs? Yes. Do you feel lucky today? I am. <laughs> Alongside the potluck class, the spaniel competitors will be busy with their clippers. Yeah. Is skin, skin problem? Yeah, and, and the eyes don't look too good. Yeah, she's had an operation on her eyes. Every dog is carefully studied for flaws and faults before battle commences. Okay, around her eyes and her ears. Skip, yeah. yeah. The spaniel uh, disease. There are 45 points for scissor quality, 40 points for style, 15 points for handling, and an hour and three quarters to put it all together. Richard Stones, the British judge. Well, really, we're looking for overall finish and overall presentation, that the dog looks as much like its breed as is possible, and yet it has to be neat and it has to be tidy and it has to be what we call a good high street trim, something that um, people are going to pay their money for. They're going to take their dog away, and the dog's going to look respectable for a number of weeks before they have to take it back to a canine beautician. John Nash is one of the top names in America. He's judging here today as well. Scissoring quality. Ladies and gentlemen, smoothness. Five minutes. Five minutes. A smoothness of the scissoring. A smooth and how plush the coat looks. Style and balance is that the dog looks like he's in proportion, that the head is balanced with the rear, the front, everything matches, so the dog must fit together well. A dog that has a small head and a big body is out of balance. One of the stars of the Americans, Connie Hirschberger, in team colors, in confident mood, and in cracking form. She's spectacular, absolutely spectacular. She's a very accomplished groomer. She operates well under pressure, and she always has a smile. It's, uh, it's very interesting, and it's, it's very nice to be able to judge such qualified and competent groomers. It really is, is wonderful to, to judge this level. It's a terribly serious business. Yes, it is. Absolutely. And it's, uh, it's growing. It's happening all over the world now. And it's, it's new. It's uh, in terms of, of industries and business, 
Uh, it's, it's very young. When you look at other businesses and industries that have been around for thousands of years, dogs have been around for a long time, but the, the profession of grooming them for the public on this level is, is very new. Ladies and gentlemen, your time is up. Can you put all your grooming equipment on the table? Connie Hirschberger was to win her class, but a creditable second place was former British champion Stephanie Brennan with a pretty bichon frise. What are the good points of Beau that you would point out? Uh, well, she's a lovely face, a lovely round face, which the bichon frise, you know, demands. Um, and she ha has a proud of appearance, doesn't she, when she's finished? She looks pleased. Are you pleased? Yes, yes, I'm pleased. It may never quite overtake snooker or darts as a television sport. We're certainly a long way from a series of one man and his clippers, but it's catching on. The owners love it, the groomers take pride in the profession, and the dogs, well, what about the dogs? The dogs enjoy it. it it's thoroughly wonderful for them because, I mean, they come in, they're fast, they spend two hours or an hour there with someone messing around, grooming them, brushing them, enhancing them, and they go out and everyone sort of looks at them they feel, you know, Jack the Lad, you know. And you'll find that, you know, when they go home to their family, they're going to be fussed again because their families would be, oh, aren't you wonderful? <laughs>